All right, so the next topic is a diffeomorphism. A diffeomorphism is a function f that goes from an open set inside Rn to an open set w inside Rn. The same dimensions here. It has to, it's called a diffeomorphism if it's one to one onto differentiable and has a differentiable inverse. Now let me just remind you what all of these things are. One to one means that f of the input of one input equal f of a second input implies that the two inputs are the same. So it doesn't ever send two different points to the same point. It always, if they're the same outputs, then they're the same inputs. That's what one to one means. Onto means that, and this is the same one to one that you learned in linear algebra. Onto means that every single w that's in the w in the output set there exists a u in the input set such that f of u is w and that's the exact same onto that was taught in linear algebra okay that's saying that you can reach every single point here from some point over here in u differentiable we just talked about that was that there was df and what we're really going to require is that df at u exists for all u in the domain. So it has to be differentiable at every single point in the domain. And finally, it has a differentiable inverse. Now, an inverse is the map f inverse. It's the map that goes back from w to u. And such an inverse is defined because every, every single output has an input and has exactly one input. So there is this f inverse from w to u such that f inverse of f of u equals u and f of f inverse of w equals w. And this is for all u's in u and this is for all w's in w. And now we're saying this guy, which we know exists from the one to one and on to, he is not just existing, but he is differentiable. So D F inverse exists at every W in W. Okay. All right. So that's the definition of diffeomorphism. And I want to do an example. Just keep in mind, we need the one-to-one -one and onto, something you know very well from linear algebra. And all we're adding that's new is differentiable and deriv the inverse, which you know about from linear algebra. You need to process how to find inverses, finding inverses of matrices. This is not a linear function, so you can't just do an inverse of a matrix to figure out what the inverse is. But you say, at least we can figure out this inverse, maybe. Often you can't find the inverse, um, but the inverse has a derivative. Sometimes you can prove something's a diffeomorphism without actually being able to find the inverse. But let's look at the particular function you all know very well and talk about how it makes diffeomorphisms sometimes. So let's look at the coordinate function that we talked about just a minute ago, and it's df. So we had this function, f of rt is our cosine t, our sine t, and those are our x, y answers. And we took the df, and it's nice and differentiable. So this is a differentiable function. And now we, we can take domains. And when we talk about different domains for this function, whether or not if we take a diff one domain or another, works better. So let me just erase this part. I should have erased this already, but whatever. Let's just take a sample domain. So let's take... Now, it doesn't matter what domain we take as far as being differentiable. This is differentiable everywhere. But I want to take, I have to be a little careful with my domains because this is the one that's wrapping things around. So there's going to be a problem. This won't be one-to-one -one if we include um, the points. Let's do the warning. That f of 0 and any t1 is equal to 0, 0. So it's not 1 to 1 unless we avoid, avoid r equal to 0. 
Okay, so radius zero, all the angles go to the same point. So we, if we want to have the one-to-one -one part, we're going to have to avoid the r equals zero. We also have to avoid this problem, which is that f at any radius t is equal to f at r t plus 2 pi, because once you go around 2 pi, you end up overlapping itself again. So again, we have to avoid this too. All right, so let's just choose a set u to avoid that sort of thing. We'll do a nice simple set. I want to choose, uh, let's just choose u equal to something like, let's run from 0 to 2, We're avoiding the r equals 0, and we'll just do our angles from 0 to pi over 2. Okay, so our u now is this pretty simple set. And then if we do that, what does our W look like? So I'll let everyone think about that a little bit. I'm going to erase this. So we have U equals... Our U is the R values go from 0 to 2. And the theta values go from 0 to pi over 2. And it's open set, so I'm not including this edge, so that's all right. right? So this is pi over 2, 0, 2. That's my u. And now we're mapping over to a set w. What does w look like? Well, the angles are going to be running from 0 to pi over 2, and the radius is from 0 to 2. So radius goes from 0 to 2, and angles only go from 0 to pi over 2. So it's this. This is the image set, not including this edge. So these are open sets. I'm not including the edges. Okay, so there we are. And this is 1 to 1. So this is the, that picture. Okay, I'm not going to tell you what the formula for that is. All right, so this looks, this is my map F. This one is one-to-one. -one. We don't have to worry. If I had run too far an angle, then this would have wrapped around and started overlapping itself. That would not be a different morphism. But as it is, it's good. Um, it's on to this W because we basically define W to be F of U. So this is automatically on to. If you choose your target set to actually be the image of the F, then it's always going to be on to. Let me make this a little straighter so you can see better. All right, so we have this F of RT is R cosine T, R sine T. This is how it looks. DF is all nice. It's one to one. It's automatically on to. I didn't actually prove it's one to one, but you could do that. I don't want to spend the time on that. Um, this is automatically on to because we chose W to actually be F of U. And so now what we need to do. The last thing we have to check is that it actually has a differentiable inverse. So how do we check it has a differentiable inverse? That can be very tricky because we have to find an inverse function. And it's usually nearly impossible in differential geometry to find the inverse function. But this one is a lucky one. We actually know what the inverse function is. So does anyone know? I'll let everyone think for a minute. U, 0, 2, times 0, pi over 2. W equals F of U. This is 1 to 1 and on to. Let me erase this bottom so we have room to talk about what F inverse is. You might remember F inverse. F inverse. It's going to take x, y back to r and theta. But r is radius, and so the radius for x, y will be square root of x squared plus y squared. And the theta, well, that can be found by using our tan y over x. Because if I take a point here, y, x, and we want to figure out the theta. 
then yes, tangent theta is y over x, so theta is our tan of y over x. All right, so that's f inverse, and now the question is, last thing to check is d f inverse exists. So that's your homework. You're going to compute df inverse for this, which means you have to remember, use a chain rule carefully for both of these functions. You might want to look up what is the derivative of tan. All right, all right, so that's enough for now. You're going to spend the next 10 minutes actually finding df inverse before you look at any more videos.